Hi, welcome back to another YouTube video. I am Ero. Have you ever found yourself tapping your foot, clapping your hands, snapping your fingers along while listening to a great music? That's right, guys. I can't really snap my fingers. Well, technically I can, but they are just soundless. Well, every time you do that, you're actually emphasizing the beat of the music. All these musical beats are closely related to the time signature which two numbers stacking on top of each other written at the very beginning of a piece of music. I have made two videos explaining how the top number and the bottom number of the time signature work. You may click onto the link above and check them out first before you carry on with this video. The top number tells us how many beats are in a bar, while the bottom number tells us what type of notes to count in a bar. The bottom number of a time signature can be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. These numbers coordinate with the following types of notes. 1 represents the semi-brief or whole note, which we rarely see it. 2 represents minimum or half note. 4 represents crotchet or quarter note. 8 represents quaver or eighth note. 16 represents the semi-quaver note or sixteenth note. You may continue to 32, 64, and so on. But I don't think I would want to encounter such a time signature. There are three main types of time signatures, simple, compound, and complex. The time signatures which the beat can be divided into two equal parts are known as simple time signatures. The most common ones are 2-4, 3-4, and 4-4 four, four time. Here is a tip. Any time signature with a 2, 3, or 4 as the top number is classified as simple time. When we talk about beats, the very first beat of the bar receives a stronger stress or accent than the other main beats, whereas the other main beats receive a slightly stronger stress than the off beats. So this gives us three types of beats, which are strong beat, weak beats, and the off beats. And when we talk about the main beats, we mean the strong and the weak beats not the offbeats. Here are some examples of simple time signature. Look at how each beat can be split into two evenly. In 4-4, the main beat is a crotchet and they can be split into two quavers. In 2-2, the main beat is a minimum and we can split each other into two crotchets. And in 3-8, the main beat is a quaver and each quaver can be split into two semi-quavers. Next up, compound time signatures. Unlike simple time, the beat can be divided into three equal parts rather than two. The top number of compound time signature is commonly 6, 9, or 12. Realize how they are multiple of three. And the most common compound time signature you will see are 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8. For compound time, the bottom number shows you the division of the beat, not the main beat. The time signature here is 6, 8. And the main beat here is always a dotted note. When we add up these three quavers together, we have one dotted crotchet. Therefore, each bar consists of two dotted crotchet beats in a bar. So in this case, 6-8 will have two dotted crotchet beats in a bar, 9-8 will have three dotted crotchet beats, and 12-8 will have four dotted crotchet beats. Each group of three quavers makes one main beat, which is worth a dotted crotchet. Here is a very useful clue that can be found in beams. Beams are those horizontal lines that join the fast notes together like quavers and semi-quavers. It's important that the quavers are beam in three to make it easier to see there are two main beats per bar. Remember, an undotted note is always split into two, the music will be in simple time. A dotted note is always split into three and the music is in compound time. All the time signatures that we have learned so far can be described as duple, triple, or quadruple. These words refer to the top number. In simple time, it's very easy to work out. Just look at the top number. 2 will be duple, 3 will be triple, and 4 will be quadruple. So 2-2 two, two, and 2-4 two, are simple duple time. 3-2, 3-4, and 3-8 are simple triple time, and 4-2, 4-4, are simple quadruple time. In compound time, you need to count the number of the main beats, or you can divide the top number by three. In 6-8, we have two dotted crotchet beats in a bar, therefore it will be compound duple time. 9-8 will be compound triple time, and 12-8 will be compound quadruple time. Whichever top number is not divided by two, three, or four are all considered as complex time. 
It contains both simple and compound beats. Although these complex time signatures are not as common, it is important to be able to recognize in the music. Here is an example of a complex time signature, 5-8 time. It's impossible to have equal grouping of two or three quavers. So what we can do is to group them into two groups. The grouping of these quaver notes can either be in 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. This is why complex time is a combination of simple and compound time. Because of this different notes amount of grouping, each bar will have uneven main beats. First beat will sound longer and the second beat will sound shorter or vice versa. Same goes to 7-8. Each bar will be grouped in three main beats with the subdivision of 3 plus 2 plus 2. Now, who's in the rhythm? When you need to work out a time signature or when you are writing a melody yourself, you should understand that the way a rhythm is written is depending on the time signature. The note value should always make it clear to be able to see where the main beats are. Look at this 6-4 time. The two notes fall precisely where the two main beats of 6-4 time. But what if we wanted to write the rhythm in a 3-2 time? Will this be correct? The answer is nope, because we can't see where the second or third beats are supposed to be. And the second G falls on an off beat. Writing the rhythm like this make it more confusing for the player to understand where the beats are supposed to be. So, to write this rhythm correctly in 3-2 time without changing how the original rhythm sounds like, first we need to work out where the main beats are. Currently, the third beat starts somewhere in the middle of the second dotted note. We can do this by breaking the dotted notes up and using a tie instead. Ties are very useful when you need to work out what a time signature is. The second note of the tie will always start a new main beat. And now it's easy to see where the third beat starts. Another very useful clue can be found in beams. Beams are those horizontal lines that join the fast notes together like quavers and semiquavers. Generally, notes are beamed together to make complete beats. How would you beam together 12 quavers in 3-2? In 3-2, the notes are beamed to the value of a minimum. What about in 6-4 time? Even though they have the exact same amount of quaver notes, but instead in 6-4 time, they are beamed to the value of a dotted minimum. This also helps us to see that 3-2 time is a triple time and 6-4 time is a double time. Time signatures can be tricky sometimes. It requires a lot of practices. The more you do this, the more comfortable you will become with time signatures. And soon enough, you will be a genius in time signature. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do, don't forget to like and share this video. Have a great time and see you guys soon. Bye!